Jackson reporting from Kids First, joined by members of our Kids First team who will participate in Q&A after our interview. Today I have the pleasure and honor to catch up with Ray Nutt, Chief Executive Officer at Fathom Events, one of the largest distributors of content to movie theaters in North America. With over three decades of experience in the entertainment business, wow, three decades, what a superstar you are. You bring three decades of experience in the entertainment business from your work as SVP, at Regal Entertainment Group, to EVP at United Artists Entertainment, to CEO at Fathom Events Entertainment. Can you describe what your job entails on a daily slash weekly basis in terms that a young person like me can understand? You bet, you bet. Um, well, I'm, I'm not only responsible, I don't always view my responsibility to my board of directors, but I, I'm responsible to all of our thousands of customers that buy, buy movie tickets through Fathom all of our employees um, and everybody in the Fathom family. But my job is, is really interesting and it's, it's really fun because it's very, very diverse. And if you look at what our content is, it ranges from everything from anime to the Metropolitan Opera to boxing. And so every single day is a little bit different for me and that's what gets me hopping out of bed and going into the office and getting excited about what I do. That's really cool that you guys have developed such a platform that's such diverse as you stated, has so many cool different things and interests for those people who are interested. And I think that's really cool. I agree with you. You joined Fathom back in 2017. Can you share some of your highlights from what you developed there and how is Fathom Events different from now than when you first joined? Yeah, we do about 150 events a year now, but when I first joined, we were actually doing somewhere around 170 events. So I got my leadership team together and I said, uh, last year actually, I said, guys, we got to do less events, but we got to have more revenue. We got to sell more tickets. And they looked at me like I had three heads and <laughs> we figured it out. And uh, uh, what the way we ended up doing that was we ended up getting, acquiring better content, more attractive content, selling more tickets to less events. So that's one of the things that I'm pretty proud of. The other thing is, it's, it's a real fun job. It's very entrepreneurial in our company. So if you decide one day or anybody decides one day that we want to get into a different vertical as opposed to arts and anime and that type of thing, you can do that. So one of the verticals that we've actually been developing is the television vertical. And uh, we celebrated with Friends their 25th anniversary last year with 12 episodes of Friends and never uh, seen before content. We, did, we brought back I Love Lucy and, and colorized uh, the content uh, on screen. We did uh, Twilight Zone, and we got a, an event teed up with Carol Burnett to bring back some of her uh, great sitcoms. So at any rate, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real fun to, it's fun to do that. Wow. Over the last three years, um, and now being CEO, you, the company has evolved so much, and every great leader has a plan, and you've just proven that. You know, the fact that you had a plan to kind of lower your events, but get more people to come and have more tickets sold. I think it was a crazy and bold idea, but it was definitely worth it. So congratulations on that. Thanks very much. <laughs> yes, um, I know Fathom Events is owned by three largest U.S. movie theater circuits, AMC, Cinemark, and Regal. You must have some insight into what these companies are doing now and what their plans are for reopening theaters. What can you share with us? Is there hope? Well, there is hope. And uh, actually speaking of hope, we, uh, when, when this crisis started happening, we actually uh, started an initiative uh, called HOPE. And we came up with our own acronym, uh, so to speak. And uh, the H stands for the health of our employees. One of the first things that we did was make sure that our employees were safe and healthy. And we were one of the first companies actually to send our employees home and have them work remotely. And I'm proud to say today that all of them are safe and healthy to the best of my knowledge. The O in HOPE stands for optimistic. You gotta have optimism and you gotta know that you're gonna come through this thing. And our, our team is very, very optimistic. I am obviously very optimistic in terms of where we are and getting theaters open and getting our content in there again. The P stands for persistence. Uh, you have to be persistent with what you do and, and our team has done that. And then the E, stands for Excel. And what that means is that we have to be ready during this time of crisis 
to tackle projects, to acquire content and do a number of different things so that when theaters do open, we're ready to go. And I'm confident that Fathom is actually gonna have more content in theaters than possibly even the largest distributors like Disney and Warner Brothers. That is great to hear. I'm glad to know that you guys are careful and being prepared for those and the safety of others. And yes, congratulations. Thank you so much for sharing about hope. Yes, back in March when it became evident how severe the COVID-19 pandemic was going to be to the industry and about them, you launched an inter internal project called HOPE, an acronym with a larger purpose to keep your company focused. So congratulations on that. Thank you. It's, it's, it's good on a daily basis to stay focused on that and have our team stay focused on that. And uh, it's, it's been very gratifying. And we hope we get to that E so we can excel out the other end. Yes. And I wanted to know, speaking of HOPE, what does it mean to your company and to the consumers? Well, I think, what does hope mean to the company and consumers? Yes. Well, to our, to our company, again, it, it has helped us stay very, very focused on, um, on what our mission is and where we're going and, and you know, acquiring content. Um, so it's, you know, every communication that I have with our company, whether it's email or a conference call or a, a, a Teams or a Zoom meeting or that type of thing these days, um, it's, it's always on our minds and it's always mentioned and, and they can relate to it. Uh, to our customers, it's interesting is I, I posted something on a couple of social sites about our HOPE project and the response has been overwhelming in terms of the people that have seen it. Wonderful to hear. Um, along with that, Fathom Events is the leader in event cinema, offering one-of-a-kind events such as live, HD performances, up the Metropolitan Opera, performing arts, sporting events even, music concerts, comedy series, so much more, Broadway shows, there's just so much to name. How important is programming for youth and families to fathom, and what might we look forward to seeing in the future? Well, that's, that's a very important category. Those two categories are very important for us, youth and family. And uh, uh, we have a number of different content providers that I probably can't mention at this time because we're in discussions with them, but they're big brands that serve the youth and family communities. And I think you're going to see quite a bit of content coming um, uh, from us. I will tell you, uh, to be honest with you, uh, uh, youth and family has, has been kind of on and off for us. And that's because when, when you're providing content uh, to youth and family, a lot of it has to be on weekends. Um, and you're competing with other things that, that uh, kids and families want to do on weekends, whether it's sports or you know, soccer, whatever it might be. So... Um, it's been a challenge for us, and uh, but we're ready to tackle it. And there's a couple of big brands that we have uh, we have coming uh, that you'll see uh, first run content and family friendly content as well. Thank you for sharing that. Um, to continue, um, I wanted to know, speaking from you as a 30 year veteran of the entertainment <laughs> industry, what advice do you have for kids like me who want to be successful in the entertainment industry and achieve the type of position that you have? Well, I, 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 like to, I like to talk about five different principles that I sort of have lived by and, and have uh, run my career by, if you will. And then the first one is, is passion. You have to have passion for whatever you do. You have to have fun with what you want to do to be successful, in my opinion. And I've had the, the great fortune to, um, to, to have a lot of fun with what I'm doing. And, and the other one is surrounding yourself with a number of, of great people. Um, you want to you wanna surround yourself with great people all the time that I'm all about team. And um, my team at Fathom is just absolutely awesome. Every single, there's only 50 of us, but, but every one of them are great. And um, we enjoy doing things together. We enjoy inventing things together. And, you know, there was a guy by the name of Jim Collins who wrote a book called Good to Great uh, a long time ago. And he talked about getting the right people on the bus. And what that means is that, you know, it analogizes a bus being maybe a company, but then you got to get the right people on the bus on your team, and then you got to get them in the right seats as well. And they got to enjoy what they're doing. Um, the third thing is establish a plan with realistic goals, um, whether that's whether those are personal plans, whether those are professional plans. 
and know when you do so that those plans are probably going to change as you get closer to your first job or your career move or whatever that might be. So you got to be flexible with that. Something that's very important to me is simplifying everything. Um, and what I mean by that is that there's a lot of noise in the world. There's a lot of people that create a lot of noise and, and distraction and everything. So what I try to do is I really try to simplify my personal life. I try to simplify my professional life and get rid of, get rid of the, you know, surround myself with problem solvers and not problem makers. You have accomplished once more, just wanted to say it again, so much in the time that you've been in the entertainment industry. I mean, three decades, that's quite a long time. And what I enjoy so much about these interviews is getting to get the journey behind what they've accomplished, seeing where they are now and where they came from. It's just astonishing to see their journey, the outcome, the issues they've been through and how they've overcome them. And I love learning advice from them because you can really take, you can really take it along with what you're doing. So thank you so much. We have just interviewed Ray Nutt, CEO of Fathom Events, and learned about how they are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and we can, what we can look forward to in the future. In our Zoom audience today, we have three Kids First reporters who would love to ask Mr. Nutt some questions. So let's see what they have to say. First off, we are going to ask Tiana to speak. There you go, Tiana. Hi, my name is Tian Sermons. Thank you so much, Mr. Nye, for sharing all of this amazing information with us today. My question is, what has been that one theater experience or event that has just got you so excited that you just couldn't miss it, and what made it so special? Well, I, I don't know if there's a, a one, one, one event or one moment. Um, in that little town that I grew up in, uh, in Wilmington, Illinois, there was a little, you know, single screen theater there. And I can remember my parents taking me to movies. It's called the Mar Theater. They were taking me to movies there. And, you know, I kind of fell in love with that, not knowing that this is what I would end up doing or that, you know, I could ever do anything related to, to Hollywood. But I, but I really think, you know, what really really I like is is the different kind of content and seeing how the people that attend that content are moved in different ways whether we're educating them we do a lot of faith and inspiration things you see people getting on their feet and clapping and you know going to boxing matches and you know with a lot of our content as well you, you, you know most people are told when you go to the movies turn your turn your cell phone off and be quiet and watch the movie with a lot of Events, it's just the opposite. We're saying turn your cell phone on, have fun, get up, dance, sing, do whatever. And I like to watch the emotion of our uh, of our customers, especially when you're taking a piece of content from a, just a, a just an idea that you have, and then watch it go all the way through the cycle and get to the big screen. That's pretty cool. That definitely does seem like a very special moment. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Tiana. Wonderful question. Over to Jashida now. Uh, how has Fathom Events been dealing with movie theaters closing all across the nation? That's a great question. Um, um, you know, nobody knew how serious this thing was going to be uh, when, it, when it first started. And, uh, you know, everybody was talking about it like it was the flu and it was going to come and it was going to go. And, you know, who, who would have thought here we are, you know, a few months later and movie theaters and businesses all over the, the world are closed. Um, so, you know, the first thing we did was we launched that whole project that I talked about. That's, that's one of the first things. Um, the second thing we did was we made sure that we uh, maintained contact with, with a number of different people. So I felt a huge responsibility to make sure since people were working at home that we maintain constant communication with our team. Um, second thing was maintaining um, uh, communication with our content providers because most of our content providers have not canceled their events. They've just sort of moved them off to later in the year. So you're going to see a lot of content coming in the latter part of this year and into 2021. So we had to make sure that uh, they knew what was going on, that they knew Fathom was going to be here for them when we got through all this. Um, and then obviously talking to not only our three owners, AMC, Cinemark, and Regal about what we were doing, what we had planned, but also um, the 97 other theater circuits in North America that we distribute to, and then circuits worldwide that we distribute to as well. So those are all the tentacles that are out there and our partners that we have to uh, 
communicate with. And uh, we, we've done a, I think our team has done a very, very good job at that and keeping the lines of communication open because when you don't do that, then that's when rumors and people start speculating and everything. And we, we don't, we don't want that. We want to be totally transparent with what we're doing. Great question. Um, now we're going to head on to Catherine. Thanks. Hi, Mr. Nutt. So your rise to the top is so fascinating. So you're the CEO. So how does your is how is your success measured? Well, you know, most people can say they're, you know, a lot of people can say their success is measured by by numbers. And, you know, you can say, yeah, our, our revenue and our ticket sales have gone up about 45 to 50 percent in three years. But you know, I, I'm, I'm, I like to measure ourselves by our, by our team and, and the people that we, we work with, the people that we're surrounded with. Uh, we spend more time, it seems like, with our people at work uh, than we do our families, and they become family, and we're a very close-knit uh, team there. There's, there's no, that old saying, there's no I in team is, is, a, is true at Fathom. Um, so I'd like to think that the way that, that I'm measured by is by the respect of our content providers, our owners, our customers. And when I see comments about what a great time they're having and bring back more of this content and that and some of the new things, the entrepreneurial things that we're doing, um, at the end of the day, you know, if, if people respect that, then that's not, that's not a bad part of your legacy to have. Great question, actually. Now we are going to kind of circle back onto Tiana. An event around Mary Poppins or Mary Poppins Returns would do well inside the United States or England. How do you determine which countries a certain experience would show well? Yeah, that's a great question because as I just mentioned, we do distribute our content internationally. So there's a couple different things I can talk to. Um, domestically, you have to do a lot of research before you acquire a piece of content and especially when it's such diverse content as ours so for example maybe a piece uh, maybe a content uh, that has a title that's faith-based um, plays well in some bible belt areas for example but and, and you really need to get granular when you, you know our team gets very granular when they think about the research that's associated with this because there's a lot at risk when you acquire some content, um, even though you're doing 150 events a year. So even domestically, there's different pockets, even in different DMAs or communities that it will do better over here than it will do over there. Uh, internationally, we distribute to about 45 countries internationally. And um, one that comes to mind uh, that, that you guys may or may not relate to is um, we, Elvis Presley back in 19, the mid 1960s was uh, was sort of his popularity was sort of falling off. So he did a program with NBC, and it was called the the 68 Elvis Comeback. And he did this comeback show where he had his band in this little circular area, and uh, they broadcasted it, and he sang a lot of his songs and everything, and they captured it. Well, we brought it back like two years ago. And I didn't know whether it would do well internationally or not. My team was saying, yeah, I think Elvis is pretty popular, not only in the United States, but he's, he's popular in other countries. So we distributed it to a number of different countries. And lo and behold, we did just as well internationally with strong performances in countries like Australia and Germany as we, as we did in the United States. So it, it really, to your question, it takes a lot of research and you really need to nail it down before you acquire not only the domestic rights, but the international rights to that content as well. Wow, that sounds like a very interesting process. Thank you. You bet. Yes, I love that question. Wonderful. Now we're going to head over to Joshita. Our Fathom event tickets more expensive than a typical first run film. That's a great question, and there is a, a, a method for our madness on that. Um, uh, Fathom tickets are traditionally more expensive than, say, a traditional movie ticket. Um, and, and that one of the reasons, there's a number of reasons. The first reason is when you go to a Fathom event, there's always added value content or some kind of added value. So you'll see a Q&A with the actor, the director, the talent, 
Um, you'll see a panel discussion of some sort that's extra that's never been seen before. Um, it ranges depending on what value you get. But the bottom line is this, you're always getting added value when you come to a Fathom event, whether it's the live performances or it can be, you know, a poster or some collectible card or something of that sort that they get at the theater when they buy the ticket. That is so cool. Thank you. Yes, very cool, actually. I didn't know so much about that, but that's cool to hear. Great question once again. Now we are going to head over to Tiana. What events have to bring the movie experiences to a digital platform, and what type of events do you think will do well there? That is an awesome question, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and, and it's a very timely question uh, based on what's happening right now with movie theaters closed. And uh, so many of the studios and others launching their streaming services on platforms. So um, uh, in order to answer that question, you sort of need to understand how it, uh, content is acquired. Um, we deal with content providers that have their digital platforms completely figured out, like the studios, for example, we have it completely figured out. And, and I will tell you, because of what has happened with theaters being closed, it's accelerated some of our discussions in terms of the digital platforms that, uh, uh, that are available to content providers that haven't figured out their downstream. Um, type of content, yeah, I think, I think, you know, the sky's the limit on that. Wow, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I agree with Mr. Matt. It's a very timely question based off what's happening, unfortunately, due to coronavirus. So, um, great question, Tiana. Now we're going to circle on to Catherine. All right. So you have a very, like, huge job. You have so many responsibilities as CEO. And how do you balance your home and work life with such a big job? And what do you do for fun or what's your happy place? Um, and, you know, personally, what, what I do is, is uh, you know, I do spend a lot of time, obviously, at work. Um, we spend, uh, uh, my wife and I, and I'm lucky to have uh, two adult children that live within five miles of us, so we get to see each other quite a bit. Um, and so uh, we spend uh, a lot of time, I have a ranch about two hours southwest of Denver that we get to go up there on weekends, and I do some fly fishing and uh, ATV riding um, uh, up there on the, in the summers, and it's about a half hour from Breckenridge, so we ski in the winter time. So that's, that's uh, it's very important that I think you get away. And not to say that if you're on the ski slopes and that phone rings and it's a business issue that I'm not answering it, but it is important to balance, I think, your personal and your professional life. And that's how I end up doing it. Yeah, and you, you sound like you have such a fun like life, well, obviously with work and without work. I mean, having a ranch, I mean, that's awesome. So thank you. <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, having a ranch, that's pretty awesome. I mean, that's pretty cool during this quarantine to be able to go out there and be that. Awesome. I love that question as well, getting to know a little bit about your personal life as well. Um, well, that is it for now. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Remember, we're Natalie Jackson. We have just interviewed Ray Nutt, CEO of Fathom Events. Be sure to look for this and other CSU interviews on our Kids First YouTube channel, weekly podcast, and website. Be sure to subscribe and come back for more interviews and reviews of the latest film and key players in family entertainment. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Nutt, for speaking with us. Thanks very much, guys. You guys are great, and uh, good luck to all of you. Thank, thank you for watching. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.